Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Automated Landscapes, edited by Merbi Vedir, Ludo Groen, Martin Kelpers, Victor Munoz Sanz, and Marina Otero Versier, and published by the New Institute. The possibility of automating human labor has captured society's imagination for centuries. Yet, its comprehensive implementation only became a reality in the early 21st century. Its consequences are now widely discussed in fields such as economics, logistics and the general media. Yet, the architecture discipline did not immediately share the same interest, focusing instead on the use of such technologies for fabricating the architecture of the digital age. Since 2016, the research department at the New Institute has embarked on a long-term project to analyze the spatial implications of automation in close collaboration with a group of researchers from different contexts. Victor Munoz Sanz focuses on architecture at the intersection of labor, management and technology, while Mervi Bedir looks at the entanglement of production and daily life in Shenzhen. Martin Kelpers, Ludo Groen and Marina Otero Versier of the research department at the New Institute then follow their interest in Cartesianism, more than human relations, algorithmic cultures and land politics in the Netherlands. Automated landscapes results from the convergence of these personal and institutional interests and, more importantly, from a collective research effort. Based on a conversation among the editors, this introductory text reflects that dynamic. This publication presents a combination of original, unpublished material alongside previously published articles, events, site visits and exhibitions from different research phases. The book's core is defined by a series of nine sites documented in drawings exploring the radical use of automation technologies in the Netherlands and the Pearl River Delta region in China, from horticulture and dairy farming to logistics, manufacturing and data storage. These are followed by 11 essays that show the evolution of ideas and arguments explored throughout the project's collaborative practice, cross-referencing the case studies. A leading hypothesis driving our research was that automation could impact the design and conceptualization of architecture. If the discipline has historically put the human at its center, designing architectures for automated production would, in principle, challenge this anthropocentric condition. What happens when humans are decentered from architecture and what might emerge out of these non-anthropocentric, more-than-human futures? This line of inquiry presupposes that automated spaces are largely devoid of humans, perpetuated in the media and in debates around the replacement of humans with robots, and by images of robot-filled factories with no humans present. Assisted by site visits, interviews and the analysis of different materials, our research team quickly came to disregard this assumption. In their current state, automation technologies are not rendering human workers completely unnecessary in sites of production. Instead, they are creating conditions that result in the displacement of certain working bodies into other spaces and territories in the global supply chain. There are plenty of bodies still there, both human and non-human, Victor says of automated production sites. Humans are still part of the chain and still labor as a component of a larger machine, however their roles, ambitions and desires, while implementing technologies, adopting them, making them more efficient and designing policies cannot be overlooked. Automation is human motivated. Another critical claim often made concerning these seemingly banal automated spaces is that architects are not involved in their design. Yet, as Ludo reminds us, these spaces still have the stamp of architects who sign off designs or adapt to zoning plans approved by municipal architects and urbanists. 
The role of architects is nevertheless narrowly positioned within these frameworks, as Marina explains. Architects often act as facilitators instead of creative professionals with an agency in the design. They replicate prescribed models or make them run more smoothly and efficiently instead of being creatively challenged or allowed to experiment with alternatives. What some could see as a loss of ground for architecture, Automated Landscapes identifies as an opportunity to go beyond classic notions of authorship to make more complex, collective and intellectual contributions rather than individual achievements. That is, architects can participate in design alongside other agents who have a stake in defining these spaces, including, as Victor and Marvi emphasize, industrial engineers from companies and investors. Despite their peripheral role in the design of automated production spaces, architects possess relevant skills to intervene in future developments. Automated Landscapes contends that architects can participate in a variety of interrelated scales beyond that of the architectural building, from the work table and production floor to the spaces of extraction that fuel the supply chain. Examples of this approach can be seen in the pre-war agriculture planning processes developed in the Netherlands. At that stage, there was still a belief in holistic landscape transformations that would positively impact the economy and labor markets, a conviction that Martin argues is now absent. Today, industrial buildings are popping up and populating entire regions of the Netherlands without serious consideration for their repercussions, with decisions driven by finance and efficiency, leaving architecture as just a byproduct. What happens inside factories, greenhouses and data centers might seem an unusual locus for architectural research. However, Automated Landscapes argues that these spaces are relevant to understanding current conditions for architectural practices, inviting us to not only look inside these buildings, but also at their ramifications, their changes in use and ownership, their effect on labor markets and their energy consumption, among other concerns. One initial hypothesis was that transformations in labor conditions inside these spaces would, in turn, transform the cities outside them. Rotterdam is one scenario where this initial argument proved relevant. Generally identified as a working-class city, Rotterdam has, in parallel to introducing mechanization and automation in its harbor, embraced the service sector and been pushed to attract a different type of resident. The automation of container handling in its port, the city's economic powerhouse and arguably the source of its urban identity, signals a political desire for a different socio-economic profile. Whereas the number of humans employed in the port might not have experienced a drastic reduction, crane operators have been replaced by automated technologies with younger white-collar workers managing them from a control room. Marina explains that while automated technologies are not singularly responsible for urban change, their introduction is a symptom of more significant processes that affect the city. Today, the implications of automated labor architectures are no longer a specialized topic for the techno-optimistic, but rather a dialogue to which automated landscapes continues to contribute, whether among professionals, communities or politicians. Students, teachers and younger generations of architects are also inspired by the project's research methods and remain interested in the possibility of intervening in these spaces both through critical analysis and critical practice. Even the industry, pressured by growing demands for a more socio-ecological approach, sees value in including the work of architects, not only for making systems more efficient, but for investigating new and more just models for facing future challenges. If the hype of automation in mainstream architectural discourse wanes, this book only becomes more relevant. 
ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.